It's already been two years since I picked up the 3,500 quid M1 Max MacBook Pro. And although I'm very aware of the fact that the M3 models are already available for purchase, I don't think they're much of an upgrade, with many people reporting that they're actually returning them. So I thought I'd share my long-term experience with my trusty M1 Max model, as these machines have undeniably marked a shift in the whole industry. So in case you're looking to get a new MacBook yourself and want to see if they're still worth it, or just simply want to see how they're holding up after two years of intensive use, this video will hopefully give you some insights and show you why I think it's probably the best machine I've ever bought. Plus, the M1 Max is on a huge discount on Amazon right now, so if it's good enough for what you need to do, which, spoiler alert, it probably is, you may want to check that out. Now, when talking about the MacBook Pro, something that's very important to note is that these machines, regardless of whether they have an M1 Pro or an M1 Max chip inside them, weren't meant for the average consumer. For all your standard laptop needs, the MacBook Air models are more than capable and provide plenty of processing power. Now, for everyone else, the Pro chips are not only incredible tools, but also an investment making a lot of things easier or even accessible when they weren't before. That being said, three and a half grand at MSRP was a lot of money. I own an M1 Max model because I needed the power editing 8K footage for client work so I could somewhat justify that cost because I knew it would get used every single day. But since the price isn't really an issue in the grand scheme of things anymore, since you can get a huge discount right now, let's get to the important bits. I use this pretty much every single day to work, edit videos, create thumbnails, write scripts, and I'm even guilty of loading up some football managers sometimes, which runs surprisingly well by the way. But all in all, this has been my go-to machine for creative and normal work ever since I bought it, leaving my custom-built Frankenstein gaming PC somewhat to its own devices, and only really using it for streaming and the occasional game. So I can safely say that after all this time, it is easily the most capable machine I've ever bought. It has been incredibly fast and reliable for me. Like I said, I went for the M1 Max to be able to edit a footage and it really has been a breeze. Whereas beforehand I had to worry about random stutters at any given moment, this MacBook handled it like a champ, only slightly caving in while playing back four different AK video tracks and Final Cut Pro simultaneously, which I can't really fault it for as that is a lot of data for media playback to handle. 4K on the other hand works more than fine even when loading multiple tracks of perspectives, not even prompting the fans to kick in at any moment, nor dropping a frame or stuttering, be that for editing or exporting any 4K project. I must say working on this machine has been very enjoyable over the last two years. Now, when it comes to one of the primary focuses of any laptop, the portability and build quality, this laptop really excels. The thick aluminium chassis feels and looks robust and radiates premium quality. As for the portability, the 16-inch screen has never, not even once, inconvenienced me at all. No matter if I took it with me on the go or just wanted to do a bit of work in my living room, it just is the perfect size for me. That being said, this really comes down to personal preference, since you're not gaining any performance by going for the 16-inch model. I just prefer having more screen real estate to work with and it has been worth every single penny of extra cost for me. Right, so at first I was extremely happy with the MagSafe port and I still use it to this day as my primary source of power when it comes to charging my MacBook, as I still haven't caved in and bought a proper Thunderbolt dock because I think they're way too expensive for what they are and settled for a USB-C adapter instead. But very quickly I noticed how limited I was when it came to the three Thunderbolt ports and will very probably have to bite the bullet sooner rather than later. Not only because it looks horrific on my desk, but since I now have to use multiple external SSDs to edit client projects as the files get larger and larger, three ports are way too little to suffice. Plus it means that apart from looking way cleaner, I could only use one cable when plugging in and unplugging my device to use at my desk. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I would very much like a fourth Thunderbolt port instead of the MagSafe charger, as the only thing that one can do is to, well, charge. Whereas another Thunderbolt port could also transfer data and would come in really handy. Complementing the three ports we have, there's also an HDMI 2.0 and an SD card reader on the side. I've used the SD card reader sometimes to transfer footage of a camera to my device, but since I now mostly operate immediately off my external drives, that port has become kind of superfluous to me. As for the HDMI port, it's 2.0 and therefore unfortunately unusable for me, as I really love the MacBook's variable and high refresh rate, which a 2.0 port doesn't allow for. Taking a quick glance at the keyboard and trackpads, given that we talked about the overall build quality before, it shouldn't come as a surprise that they feel and look amazing. Typing on the keyboard feels fast and responsive and as for the trackpads, compared to any other laptop trackpad out there, it really is a dream come true. On the 16 inch it is larger than on any other laptop I've seen so far and is still unmatched in quality as well as in feel and function. This is truly the first time I have ever been comfortable enough to not bring my mouse with me anywhere and only using it at my desk, as the trackpad is just that good. The battery overall has really swept me off my feet. 
On days I'm working straight off it with that power cord at hand, it can easily last the whole day doing lighter work, like anything text related, and still last me roughly 6 to 8 hours doing very intensive work, like editing on a video project. Coming from a Windows laptop that would last roughly 90 minutes to 2 hours no matter what I did, all while sounding like a 90s hoover in its last moments, this has truly been a stunning and phenomenal experience. After roughly 2 years, my battery health still sits at 99% compared to when I bought it, really showing off what the integrated macOS battery optimizer can do. Granted, this device has been plugged in roughly 70% of the time, drawing power from the power adapter rather than the battery, but this is still incredibly impressive. Still the question arises, is it still good enough now, especially with the M3 chips available for purchase? If you recall my slide deck at the start of the video, you'll know that I think what Apple has released is very tough to beat, and even though the almost 50% boost in power from the M3 Max, when compared to the M1 Max is quite nice on paper, I really don't think it will make that much of a difference, because I can't imagine anybody really noticing it in day-to-day -day usage, and given that Apple deliberately compared the M3 to the M1s really tells you all you need to know about the sheer power the M1s still have to this day. Now if you desperately need more power and have the M1 Max chip totally maxed out, you already know you'll be getting the M3s. I just think that that demographic will be quite small and that most people considering a pro model laptop would still be fine with the M1 Max chip for quite a bit of time to come, a full 28 months after its initial release. Especially since you can get a 16 inch model for under 2000 quid. But let me know what you think, would you still go for a cheaper M1 Max chip in 2023 or rather go for the new models? Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel as we're just getting started and it would really help out a lot. Until next time.